There are certain people in your life who want you to be miserable, but it's not for the reason you think. Now, most of us have had some sort of experience where we've been in relationship with somebody, whether it's an intimate relationship, a familial, a friendship relationship, co-workership, whatever ship that we've embarked upon. And we've encountered an individual who just seemed to always want to drag us into misery, right? It's just a miserable individual and they want to drag us into misery. Now, if you can't relate to this, you might be that person. You might be that individual and it's okay. This ain't no shame in video. This ain't no uh, blame in video. This ain't none of that. This is just straight up facts, no cap, all gown. So we find ourselves in this, in this relationship dynamic where this individual just seems to always be miserable and they want to suck us into it. And it's different ways, right? Sometimes it may be they want to literally bring us into a drama. Sometimes it's they're always calling with something that is going on in their lives, right? Some situation, a circumstance that they are quote unquote dealing with in that moment of time. And there just always seems to be something going on in their life, right? There are those individuals who are always complaining and want to bring us into the complaints. Maybe it's a coworker and you guys are always meeting up after work and finding a way to complain about the job and to complain about life, etc. And even if you're somebody who wants to go beyond that, you just feel as if there is this draw, there is like this this uh, vacuum almost, right? That sucks you into this person's life and you just perpetually feel like you're on this misery cycle. Every time you're around them, you feel drained, you feel a lack of energy, you feel like something's just off, but yet you continue to go to them. And for this, I tell you, my friends, that there are indeed individuals who want everybody to be as miserable as they are. And the reason is not as malicious as you may think. Now, yes, there are psychopaths out there. There are the narcissists of the world, but not everybody is a narcissist. Not everybody's a psychopath. Don't let social media fool you just because people ain't liking their exes anymore or, you know, they have some type of issue with somebody. It doesn't mean everybody is a diagnosed narcissist or a textbook psychopath, right? Or even a sociopath at that. You know, let's not use that too liberally and freely because then it's going to water that down. But there are individuals who simply come from a state of fear. And that is a majority of us. Majority of us were raised with the programming of fear, right? The fight or flight or freeze. You don't want to forget about that one. And that's perpetuating within our bodies. And we always feel a need to either cling on or to run from or to square up with, right? That basically is like the lives that we get used to living. And so an individual who is in misery who is addicted to the feelings associated with misery, will also want to bring others who will continue to perpetuate that addiction that they have. It's like any other addict to any other chemical substance. If I am addicted to heroin, I also want others around me who are addicted to that heroin, right? I want somebody I can resonate with at that level and who will perpetuate my addiction. And this is what happens with emotional addictions. So we may think that we are innocent. We may think that we're in the clear, that you know we have nothing to do with the misery. But in truth, there's a part of us that is fed by that very same cycle of misery. And it is up to us to break that cycle within ourselves in order for us to no longer have these relationships. Because I'm telling you right now, there are people that you think, oh, they just want my help. Well, they just want, you know, they just need somebody to be there for them. They just need somebody to lean on, lean on me when you are strong and I'll be your friend. I help you carry on. We just think that that's all they need. When in reality, they are looking to perpetuate that cycle of addiction that they have to misery. And you, my friend, have to make a conscious decision for yourself to say, no, 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 this is not for me. I am no longer willing to accept this way of living. Instead, I'm going to choose to break free from my own emotional addictions, whether it's to people pleasing, because that's usually what would draw you to such a person, right? The savior or martyr complex that you start to develop, right? I have to save every damn body. So, you know, I got to be there for them. But in truth, you are being served by that very same thing. So long as you remain in those trauma bonds. Did I say the word? Yes, I said the word. Am I a psychologist? Not licensed, not clinically, but I do see individuals on a daily basis. One was myself who have been in this perpetual cycle whether it was guilt-based, shameless plug, shout out to Doing Me Guilt-Free, my very first published book. Make sure to get your copy, link below. Whether it's shame-based, 
whether it's, again, rooted in your own desire for chaos and misery. Like I used to be a person who proclaimed how much I just desired and loved peace. But in truth, my life was always at, at some level, there was always some some sort of chaos. Right. They just had to be some chaos. And again, I would have admitted to anybody honestly, that I wanted peace. But at a subconscious level, there was a part of me that always was tied to chaos because I always felt a need to fix, right? Again, my thing was my self-worthiness comes from my ability to fix people. Therefore, there must always be chaos. There must always be brokenness. If there was too much calm, I felt, man, there at least had to be a storm coming after this, right? So I became addicted to that sensation. And so People and individuals who were simply just miserable and choosing to be miserable. Now, when I say choosing, you know, a lot of people get it twisted. Well, not a lot of people, but some people get this twisted and they think, well, nobody would ever choose to be miserable, right? Nobody ever choose to be sick. Nobody ever choose to be uh, in depression. Well, when it seems to serve us more than it seems to harm us at a subconscious level, at an emotional level, we will do certain things that seem to be painful to the outside, right? Like if, if you get a certain level of attention, affirmation, and love for a sickness, you will find ways to manifest sickness into your life. It's the very same thing with misery. There are certain individuals who find their source of attention, their source of quote-unquote love, it's really not love, it's tolerance, and acceptance from their misery. So long as they have problems going on in their life, they can bring people into their experience who they can use as a source. Again, I'm not going to get into the narcissist conversation, though there, I know some people are going to get to it on this one for sure, because yes, it's obvious in those situations, you're literally going to be a source for that individual, right? Which is why we need to work on self-respect. That's right. R-E-S-P-E-C-T yourself. That's what we need to work on in order to not jump into those situations and stay and remain in those situations that we know are no good for us. Now back to the matter of hand, matter at hand, excuse me. So we find ourselves in a place where we are entertaining these individuals because we feel some sense of what is it? guilt, obligation, but at the core, we are resonating with that misery. And so it will always be a part of our experience. And I have to tell you this maybe 10 more times for it to actually hit home. It is not your responsibility to fix anybody. It is not your responsibility to fix anybody. It is not your responsibility. <laughs> Multiply that by, by three more, right? It is not your responsibility to fix anybody. Therefore, when you are in a situation, a circumstance where somebody is desiring for you to be their savior in some sense, opt out. You're saving yourself life energy that you could actually put into, first of all, yourself. And secondly, those around you who are actually looking to overcome as opposed to stay within that cycle, right? There are those who are in love with the victimhood mentality. And they will continue to be in that space. But for those who truly want to transcend, you can put your energy towards them. And in those spaces, you're not going to find people complaining all day. You're going to find people looking for solutions all day long. People looking to go within. They're not going to dump their trash on you every single day. They're going within to solve those things. They're getting the help. They're paying the people in order to say the things and do the things, right? That's what you're looking for within your life. And that's what I'm always aspiring towards. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm not speaking from a soapbox. I'm speaking with you and not to you. And what I've come to recognize within my own experience, and within the experience of those that I have, I'm fortunate enough to, to aid and to help and to serve is that those who are miserable and desire to, to remain miserable because it is serving them in some sense are just going to be miserable and they will suck you into that space. They will become the black hole. You don't know where that's about to go, but you know that it ain't no good for you, at least not in this lifetime. So it's time for us to break free. It's time for us to break away. Now, that being said, 
Why do I still call it a shameless plug? This is my video. I can plug whatever I want. Make sure to get yourself a copy of this right here. Now, this is the large copy. This is what I call the note takers version, but there's a smaller version that I'm going to link in the description below. This is my book, Doing Me Guilt Free, Breaking Free from People Pleasing and Unleashing Your Personal Power. This right here is the book I wish I had at age seven, to be honest with you. Um, Frankly, I would have been doing what I'm doing right now at age nine if I had this thing at age seven. But yeah, make sure to get yourself a copy of one of these. And for anybody looking to take it to the next level, I have indeed released a course that is in the very same structure. It's just an eight week course and it is a more in-depth course. So you can get your hands on that and get yourself enrolled into that. I would leave that link as well within the description below. Till the next time. Love you guys. Peace. Thank you.